This tutorial is for importing animated Mixamo characters into Unity so that they can be imported in the Tabletop Simulator. When we import these characters into Tabletop Simulator, we will import their corresponding animations so that they can be triggered from Tabletop Simulator scripts. We start the process by going to the Mixamo.com page. If you have not been there before, you will need to register but registering is for, uh, for free. I believe they may have some paid accounts for additional software, but the free personal um, account is sufficient for what we need to do. Once you are logged in, you can go to the characters page and you will see a selection of various characters. We can choose any of these characters to work with. Let's select this one for our tutorial. By double clicking the character, the character loads eventually. And a moment later, the text will appear. Now, while there is a limited number of characters uh, available, keep in mind that by adjusting the texture files that come with the character, you can make various variations of that type of character. Okay, so as we can see, our character has loaded in the T-Pose. Obviously, for most applications, the T-Pose is not desirable. If we are bringing this character into Tabletop Simulator, we're probably interested in uh, a pose that might be an idle pose, maybe some kind of a combat-ready pose, uh, probably a dying animation, a walking animation, and an attack animation. So let's start with that. We can go to the Animations tab here and do a search. Let's go with idle. So now we've got a various <coughs> idle poses or animations that we can apply. By double clicking on them, we will see what it looks like when that pose or animation is applied to our character. That looks pretty good for our idle state, so we're going to download that. When downloading, ensure that you've selected the FBX format and the With Skins option. Okay, now that we have a idle state, we probably want something of a, maybe a combat ready stance. This one right here looks pretty good. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's a possibility, or maybe Something like this, looking around. Yes, I think we'll go with this. You will also note that uh, for most animations, there's a bunch of uh, sliders that you can use to somewhat adjust this animation. But I will take it as it is and download it. Again, FBX format with skins. It is important to note that when you are downloading these animations, you must download them all for the same character. If you download different animations for different characters, they will not work inside Unity uh, together uh, to animate a single character. So when downloading your animations, always make sure the same character is selected. Okay, so now we've got a idle stance, a ready stance. So let's look for some kind of a death scene. I'm going to type die and we get a number of animations. Now, what you want to look for is some kind of an animation that doesn't move too far from the initial position. If you don't do that, it can get a little bit difficult to um, select the character in Tabletop Simulator because his selection point will be actually quite far away from the animation. So possibly this right here, um, the character seems to be toppling kind of downwards instead of going for, uh, a lot forward or backward. So 
I think that will be good. We'll download that. Again, FBX format with skins. Okay, so now we want some kind of a uh, walk. So I'm going to tap walk. And we'll try this. Pretty standard. Okay, so now for walks, they do have a check mark for in place. If you check that, you can see that the character is still walking, but it's all in one place. This is what we want for Tabletop Simulator. So ensure that your in place check mark is applied when downloading your walk. FBX format with skins, download. Okay, and lastly, we're going to want some kind of an attack. So maybe a slash. Yes, that will be good. We'll add in a sword later, but that looks pretty good. And we will download that. FBX with skins, download. Okay, with our animations downloaded, we can now import them into Unity. Now, before we can start importing into Tabletop Simulator, we will need a couple of things. We need to get Unity if you do not already have it. We can get Unity by going to the Unity uh, website, Downloads Archive, as shown here in the URL. The version that we want to get is Unity 2019.1.12. Although there are more recent versions, the tutorial was tested with the 2019.1.12 uh, and therefore is guaranteed to be compatible. The tutorial may not be compatible with newer versions. Once we download Unity 2019.1.12 and install it, we will also need the Tabletop Simulator project for Unity. We can get this from GitHub. Once again, the URL is up here for getting this project, and we can just download it. This is the project that we will open up in Unity uh, to allow us uh, to create Tabletop Simulator characters um, with the necessary scripts so that we can activate those animations within Tabletop Simulator. Both the uh, Unity and this project are free for personal use. Uh, Unity does have uh, commercial licenses, but it is free for personal use. When I first started this process, I found two documents for importing uh, things into Tabletop Simulator. The first document was for an earlier version of Unity and an earlier version of the Tabletop Simulator project. The other document was more up-to-date with a more recent version of Unity, but it did not have the specific instructions on how to set up the settings for a character. It was a more general uh, document for importing um, general items into Tabletop Simulator, but without the uh, specific details. So I ended up taking both of these documents, merging them uh, together, and creating this tutorial. As a result, some of the settings in this tutorial are set because I understand why they're being set, and I will explain that. And some of them are set for uh, no particular reason, except for that the previous documentation uh, said to do so. As a result, if you follow these settings, you should be able to import your characters into Tabletop Simulator. There may be other ways to do it. Uh, some of the settings that I'm setting here may not be necessary to make it work, but following these specific settings should get it to work.
let's get started. Once we have downloaded the Unity and started the program, we should get a layout similar to this. We have our hierarchy and our assets down here. First, we'll start by clicking on the assets and making a folder for our project or for our character. Create folder and I'm going to call it car short character. Now <clears throat> we'll double click that folder so that we can import things into this uh, subfolder to keep things uh, nicely together. So now we'll navigate to our downloads and drag over all of the animations that we have downloaded earlier. Simply select all your animations and drag them over. Unity will think about this for a moment and run through the importing process. Once the process finishes, we should see our animations in the character folder that we created. Now, since all of these animations are specific to a, a character, I like to rename them so it's evident for which character they're intended. In our case, we're going to call our character Bob. I also like to rename the animations uh, to indicate what state they represent. Uh, because when we download from the Mixamo webpage, uh, the animations will be uh, named according to their page, but that doesn't always uh, coincide with what we want to use it for. So by renaming uh, the file not only with the character name, but the state that you're going to use it for makes it uh, easier later on. Helps to spell it right. Okay, so now we have our animations all uh, named using the character name and also the state that they're going to represent. Now we need to adjust the settings on all of these animations. The process for doing this is very similar for each one of these animations with only a minor difference. So clicking on the first uh, animation, our attack, we can see that the inspector has brought up the uh, <coughs> uh, various properties for this animation. We are going to start with the model tab and keep all of the settings except we are going to enable read write enabled and change the blend shape normals to import. Then we hit apply to apply those settings. Next we move over to the rig tab. And here we're going to change the animation type to legacy. This is needed in order for a tabletop simulator to understand the bone structure of your character. Now, uh, once again, we hit the apply to apply that setting change. Next, we will go to animation. Now, in this case, this is the Bob attack animation. So I'm going to rename it here to follow that uh, naming convention. Bob attack. By keeping all of these, um, you know, the file name and the animation name, and later on the settings um, with the same naming convention, it will be easy uh, for us to select these things and not have to worry about uh, um, different names. Okay, so now, in addition, uh, under the wrap mode, we need to make an appropriate selection. In this case, Bob Attack is an animation that we want to play only once 
and then go back to playing with one of the idle animations. So the selection that we need to make here is once. So the wrap mode needs to be set to once. And now we apply. Lastly, we'll go to the materials uh, tab. And here we will first select extract textures. This will ask for a folder to put these textures into. So I will just create a subfolder here in our uh, character folder. And select that. <coughs> Next. Oh. Uh, if you get an, an error message like this, just uh, select the fix now. Next, we're going to extract the materials. Again, uh, Unity asks for a folder to extract them into, so we'll create one. And select that. Now, if everything uh, occurred correctly, you should see now that down here, there will be a uh, texture material applied as opposed to none. Okay, so that's the setting for our first animation. Now we're going to repeat the similar settings for the rest of these animations. So Bob die, model, again, read right on, uh, blend shapes, import, apply, rig needs to be legacy, apply, animation, we're gonna rename it Bob die and now our wrap mode. Now the death animation is also played once like the attack animation but there's a difference. Our attack animation after occurring we want it to go back to an idle state but with a die we want it to play once and then remain dead. So in this case our selection needs to be clamp forever not once, it needs to be clamped forever. That will ensure that it plays once, but the, the character will remain lying dead as opposed to getting back up and running the idle state. Apply. And again, we're going to repeat the process with the textures. We can just select the uh, folders we've already made. I'm not quite sure that this is necessary for each one of the animations. Most likely it is only necessary for the idle animation, uh, but just in case I'm going to do it with each one. Okay, next animation is done. So now we're going to go to our Bob Idle. Again, uh, model, read right on, blend shapes import. Rig legacy animation Bob idle. Okay, in this case, uh, this is an idle state. We want this idle state to keep looping until something else is selected. So we uh, select here the uh, loop option. Don't forget to apply. Again, we're going to do the materials. And the materials. Okay, now that one's done. Bob ready. Model. Oh. Why? Rig. Why? Animation. Bob ready. Uh, same with the uh, idle um, stance. We want the ready stance to keep looping until replaced by something else. So we, we are going to choose wrap mode loop. Uh, apply. And once again, we'll do the textures and materials just in case.
And that's it for that one. One more to go. Bob Lock model. Rig animation. And similar with the uh, previous animations, we want the walking animation to continue looping until replaced by something else. So the wrap mode is going to be a loop. Extract the textures. Extract the materials. And we are now done setting up the animations. Okay, so normally we want our character to start with the idle uh, state. So we're going to take the idle animation, click on it, and drag it over to our hierarchy to the very top. We can see now that Bob Idle got added to our hierarchy. I'm going to then rename Bob Idle to Bob because Idle is not his last name. Okay, so now that Bob is selected, we can see the inspector provides us information. Uh, the transform information we do not want to touch. We don't want to offset Bob. Uh, we don't want to scale him. So we just leave that as is. Uh, now, we also have an animation here. If we open up this uh, animations uh, sub folder, we can see that the size is currently one. But we don't have one animation, we have five. So we're going to change this to five. That adds a bunch of elements to the possible anima uh, animations. So we're going to start with Bob Idol, that's okay. But then we're going to also select Bob Ready. Then we're going to select Bob Die. Bob Attack. And Bob Walk. The order here isn't all that important. The, uh, the first one is because that's the default one. But otherwise, the rest of these are not um, uh, all that important because we will actually map them to uh, tabletop simulator settings later. Now, the other change we want to make here is the culling type should be always animate. Okay, once we've got that, we're going to add a component and it is animator. Okay, once you've added this component, uh, you can actually keep all of these settings as they are. They don't need to be modified, but this component needs to exist. Okay, next we need to add a collider. Uh, what a collider is, is it dictates the shape of your uh, object uh, for the purpose of collisions. Uh, for the purpose of our character, we can just use a simple box collider. It'll mean the Collisions with that object aren't perfect, but a box collider is um, a quick way to add uh, collisions to your character without adding a lot of processing power to um, Tabletop Simulator. There is an option for a mesh collider, but I don't believe that that is actually a very good choice because when your character animates, the collider probably does not animate with it. So you'll have inaccuracies anyways. So we're just going to add a box collider. Okay. Ensure that you're choosing the box collider, not the box collider 2D. We want the 3D version of it. When we add the box collider, we can see it here on the main screen. As we can see right now, it is not matching our character at all. So we're going to click on the Edit Collider, 
and use the little handles to adjust the box. We want a closely matching box that frames our character as close as possible, but uh, still keeps him inside the box. Okay, now we've added our collider. There's one last step, and that's to add the link between our character and Tabletop Simulator. This is done by going into the Assets script. You will find two scripts. The first one is for mapping our animations. The second one is for mapping sounds. Uh, we're not going to be mapping any sounds in this tutorial, so I'm just going to grab the first script and drag it up to Bob and drop it down. You can see now that a, the script was added to Bob in the inspector. And if we open this up, we have looping effects and triggering effects. Uh, looping effects are animations which continue to play, i.e. loop, until a different looping effect or triggering effect is selected. Triggering effects are animations that play once and then return back to playing whatever looping effect was in effect. So in our case, our idle state, our ready state, and our dying state, uh, sorry, our um, walking state are obviously looping effects. Our attack is obviously a triggering effect. What may not be obvious is our dying is actually a looping effect, not a triggering effect. If we made our dying a triggering effect, the character would die, and as soon as it fin uh, finished dying, the animation would go back to playing a looping effect, which is most likely either walking, idle, or ready, and that would defeat the purpose of the death scene. That's why it needs to be a looping effect, so that it keeps playing the death scene, but because we've put on the animation the clamp forever, it'll only play once, but then it will prevent other looping effects from taking over. So, that means we now have four looping effects and one triggering effect. Now we're going to go edit each one of these. So, element zero, we're going to call it, again, the same as everything else, Bob Idle. And under the animation for that, we're going to click uh, the component. We're going to click is Bob. And then once again, we're going to type in the name of the animation to trigger. Okay, second element. Well, we're going to make it uh, Bob ready. As you can see, by keeping the name uh, of the animation in all cases the same, now we don't need to worry about if this should have that name or that name or that name because we've kept Bob ready for all the various tasks for the, for the ready phase. We've kept Bob idle for all of the components for the idle uh, animation and so on. Keeping the name the same makes it very consistent. Okay, the next one is going to be Bob Die. Animation, once again, Bob. Bob Die. And the video speed up. Yes, I did. Okay, and the last one is going to be our Bob Walk. Animation Bob Walk Component Bob. Okay, so we have our four uh, looping effects, and now our one triggering effect is going to be Bob Attack. It's going to be our on Bob and Bob Attack. 
Okay, so we've set the script up. So now we're ready to create the, the asset bundle and import it into Tabletop Simulator. To create an asset bundle, we first switch back to our assets character folder so that we can put the, uh, uh, the asset bundle into the right folder. Then we take Bob from our, our hierarchy and drag him back into the character folder. This will bring up a dialog asking us if we want to create a original prefab or prefab variant. A prefab is just a um, sort of sealed version of the character that allows us to make uh, copies of him in a project, uh, but that's what we need to do to uh, allow us to make an asset bundle. Just select original prefab. Now you can see that the prefab has been created. It's been placed here in our folder. And we can see it's currently selected, but the asset bundle is set to none. Um, we need to change this. We need to assign Bob to an asset bundle so that when we build that bundle, we get Bob. We can do this by selecting new and then entering in a name for the bundle. I don't know if this is a, a bug in Unity or if it's just my computer. I find that when I select a new asset bundle and try to type in the uh, text box, it doesn't allow me to do that unless I move this uh, division over a little bit. Uh, but that might just be my, uh, my computer. Uh, now, the next step is optional. You can also mark this asset bundle as being a character. We can do that by clicking over here and selecting character. This is not necessarily, it's just uh, purely a, a tag uh, so that when you're looking through asset bundles by these, by these tags, you can easily identify which ones are characters. But if you do not uh, select the character tag, it will still work perfectly fine. Okay, so the last thing we do is right click in our folder and select build asset bundle. This will uh, take a few minutes um, and uh, Unity will run through the different bundles. If you have more than one, it will build all of them. And once it is done, it tells you down here uh, where you can find your um, asset bundles. So now with our asset bundle build, we can import it into Tabletop Simulator. And just close our game selection so that we get a empty uh, empty game. Okay. Now we can go to objects, components, custom, and asset bundle. This will bring up the um, asset bundle uh, dialog. Under main, locate the asset bundle that we just created. It should be wherever you put your, um, your Unity Tabletop Simulator project. It should have a subfolder of asset bundles and you should be able to find your asset bundle there. Select that. Now, here you have an option for local and cloud as you have with uh, most uh, import options. I would recommend using local when you're still trying to uh, figure out whether your asset bundle is working correctly. This will not only uh, make the load a little bit faster because it's loading from the local files, but it also means that if your asset bundle isn't working correctly, you don't have to go back into your um, cloud uploader and remove files. However, once your asset bundle is working correctly, you will need to switch it to cloud-based, otherwise you will not be able to use it in a multiplayer game. So I'm going to select local for now. There is an option for a secondary asset bundle. 
uh, what this is for is if you're, for example, ca creating characters, but you want to add special effects to those characters, which are common for a bunch of characters, you can make a second asset bundle with just those special effects, and then you can specify it here. In our case, we're just going in with the base character, so we do not specify anything for our secondary um, asset bundle. Now here we can select the type. Uh, in this case, we're uh, importing a character, so the most appropriate selection would be figurine. Um, for the mat material, it's up to you. I find that the wood selection seems to mimic the um, texture that we provided on our character uh, the best, uh, that in cardboard. The uh, plastic and metal give uh, more of a shine, so if you prefer that, uh, or if you're trying to make a, a sort of a metallic version of your character, obviously make those selections. Uh, you can always go in and change this uh, later um, after we've imported our asset in. So that's basically it. We hit import. Okay, and now we can see our model has imported. Uh, if we uh, move our model around, it works just like any asset. We can move it, uh, we can rotate it, but you will note that when we put our mouse over it, we get this uh, kind of a magic uh, icon or whatever you want to call it. This indicates that the object has animations. If we right click on our object, we can see we have our looping effects and our trigger effects. If you will remember, our looping effects, uh, number one is the idle state, uh, number two is the ready state, uh, number three is the die state, and number four is the walk state. Uh, you will see that the, the tooltip does repeat that for us. And our one triggering effect is our attack. So we started off in the idle state. I can place it in the ready state. And we can see our character has now gone into the ready state doing that continuous ready animation. We can do the die state. Okay, and as we can see, unlike the ready state, the die state is executed once, but then stays in that state. Now we can do the walking state. And lastly, we can do our attack state. And you can see once the attack state is complete, it automatically goes back into the idle state, which in our case currently was uh, ready. If I would switch to our idle and do an attack, it would return back to the idle. Uh, now, obviously, you can trigger all these animations uh, directly from the right click context menu, but you can also access all of them with the um, object.asset bundle play looping uh, effect or play trigger effect. Uh, important thing to note is when you are uh, using either of these functions, uh, the parameter to it is the number of the either looping effect or triggering effect, but for those functions, uh, the index is zero index. That means the first animation is zero, not one. So for example, if we want to refer to the walk, which is the fourth looping effect, we would actually use an index of three instead of four. Now, currently you can see when we pick up uh, the character and move the character around, it does not automatically uh, do a walking effect like the stock figures that come with Tabletop Simulator. This can be easily fixed by adding a script to your game. Um, it is a script that's added to the global section uh, and then applies to all characters um, that, uh, that we've put into our game. So I will show you the script that's necessary. Once we have our uh, game saved, we can go into scripting and add the simple script that will animate the walking. 
on the global tab, we add these two functions. This function on object pickup will check if the object has an asset bundle, and if so, it will play looping effect 3. Now note that our animation for walking is actually 4, but Tabletop Simulator uses at, um, indexing starting at 0, so our fourth looping effect actually is number 3. We have a similar function for the on object drop. So when an object is dropped and it has a asset bundle, we are going to play the looping effect zero, which is our idle. So basically when a character is picked up, he starts walking. When he's dropped, um, he's going to go back to his idle state. And we can see, if we zoom in again, but now when we pick up the character, he automatically animates walking until dropped and he stops. Now you might be asking yourself, well, we have this character, but he has no weapon that he is currently using. Yes, in Unity is where we would typically add such weapons. You could have made it part of the original character, but in many cases, this is not desirable because when the character is being animated, things like a sword, which should be rigid, tend to bend with the animation, and that's not desirable. So what we do is we bring our character into uh, Unity, as we have done, and then we add the sword at this stage. To add a prop is fairly simple. As long as you have the OBJ or FBX version of the prop. In this case, I have a sword that is in OBJ format. So, similar to how we were importing these animations, I'm going to drag it in. It now is available in Unity. I can drag it into the scene. And now I need to resize it. As we can see, the sword is much, much bigger than our character. So with the sword selected, there is a transform which includes scale. So I can now play around with the numbers to try to size this sword more appropriately. Next, we need to move the sword into position. So we will try to bring it into the hand of our character. Probably still a little big. So let's adjust. Okay. That looks like it could be okay. So now, the sword is in, in position, but right now, if we look at our hierarchy, the sword is outside the hierarchy of Bob. That means if Bob starts to move around, the sword won't move with him. So what we want to do is we can open up Bob, and again, we get the mesh and the bone structure. If we open up the bone structure, we will get the various bones. So we've got um, here um, bones going towards the legs. If we follow the spine, uh, then we will, the sword is being put in the right hand, so we want to go down through the right shoulder, right arm, right forearm, and right hand. If we now take the sword and drag it to the right hand, 
we can see that over here it still looks the same, but now the sword is tied to that hand. So when that hand moves, the sword will move with it. Okay, and now it's just a matter of creating our bundle again. So I'm going to delete here our original Bob, drag Bob back down here to make the uh, prefab, and once again now we need to select a asset bundle for Bob to be added to, and here we can build it, and now we have our character with a prop. So within Tabletop Simulator, we can delete the old Bob. We still have this open, so we'll reselect um, Asset Bundle. Navigate back to our new bundle. I'm still going to use Cloud for. I mean, still going to use Local for now. Uh, figurine Wood, I prefer, and there's our character. Whoa! I keep flipping in. But you can see now he's got the sword. And as you can see, when he's walking, the sword moves with his arm. Similarly, if we go into the ready stance, for example, the sword moves with the arm. If we go into our die stance, yeah, sword moves with the arm. And uh, if we bring him out of the Die stance and we make him do an attack. There you go. Again, attack from uh, with the sword. All of these animations, as we said, are available through uh, right clicking on the uh, character and selecting uh, one of the animations. But in the scripting, they are available through the object.assetbundle.play looping effect or play trigger, uh, sorry, play uh, looping effect or play trigger effect. Okay, and uh, that's it. Now you can import animated characters. Uh, just because I defined a idle, ready, die, walking, attack animation, uh, this is not at all limited to that. You can add all kinds of animations, whatever you need for your own game. And similarly, you can add all the necessary props that you want um, at the end of the stage to basically uh, do whatever you want. That's it. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.